Hey everyone, it's Julian. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make Crystal Castle style witch house. I've synthesized everything from scratch, even the drums. We're going to be talking about how to make synthesized drums, leads, basses, all that in this video. As usual, you can grab the full project files, samples, mini presets. Everything from this video is available at the top of the description. Definitely go grab that. It's a really high quality template that will help you make the best music of your life right now, today. Link is right in the top of the description. Also, check out my lessons and my ghost productions and track finishing. All that's up there as well. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Every little bit helps. And let's dive into the video. Alright, so the first thing we got up here is the lead. So first, we'll talk about the MIDI. This lead, you know, the style of this is like you have the bass kind of playing the progression, right? Like this is establishing the chord progression, and then this lead over here is telling the story over top of it. Like the bass is the setting, this is the actual like story. And when you listen to these on their own, you can see there's a lot of groove happening just in that lead, just with this sort of like eighth note and quarter note rhythm that we're doing. Really, yeah. You see, it's also really simple. There's really not that many notes if you look at it. It's really like you pick a few voices that play well together. Like here, you know, we got like A and C. Like, you know, you just find those like few little voices that work well and tell the story with those. For the actual sound, it's two layers. So it's this guy and this guy. So obviously this is like the main body of the sound and then that second layer adds like some nice punch and kind of fills it out. So for the first layer, it's made with wavetable. We have two wavetables, this echoes one and this signs two. We got a little bit of a low pass filter and then a bunch of unison. So here's without the unison. It's very like synthetic and then when you add the unison. It almost makes it like this big choir sound. Then we have a bunch of chorus, a bunch of reverb, and then a high pass filter. And then the second layer. So it's actually this sound, this like flute sound out of Ableton that I tweaked a bunch. It came like this with like the sustain all the way up and it was, you know, kind of more like a flute type of sound. And then I brought the sustains of all these oscillators down. So what happens is you get that like, like that attack on the sound. Like you hear that at the start and then it kind of mellows out and what it does is it makes perfect room now for this because this doesn't have a lot of attack right so this can make it a little bit more pronounced and then it gets out of the way just in time for the first lead to come through and then that just has a high pass filter on it then we have the bass So here's the bass again. This is playing the progression. You know, we're going F down to D, like actually a very F major sounding sort of thing there. And then we go up. So it would be like, if this was F major, it would be like the root note, major sixth, fourth, and then another sixth down there. And you can hear it's just like a really simple progression. It's only three notes, but it's really, it's again the same idea as with the lead. It's like, you know, these voices play nicely together and these ones play really nicely together as well so we're just really like hammering that in and not adding a whole bunch of extra notes that don't need to be there for the sound on this one it's also layered layering is a really great way to get these more textured kind of like quirky sounds without just like overblowing it with distortion right so what we're doing here is it's got this arpeggiator going on eighth notes we get the gate up pretty high and then the steps on one so that's what makes it do the like I'm just hitting one note here. So what's happening here for the actual sound, it's two layers. We've got this. 
which is just like a very straightforward bass, right? We've got the sub oscillator, the sweep saw wavetable, and then this VOSM foreman. You can hear those two on their own. Going into a low pass filter, which has just a bit of an envelope on it. And then we also have that same envelope on the oscillator position. Plus LFOs on both of those. So there's just a ton of movement happening in there. But it's just like this simple, like punchy bass. And we have this monster. So what this is, is meant to add that like kind of craziness on top of it. I was hearing this in some of their tracks, like having that really steady bass, but with some kind of a texture on it that you just don't get with just like the normal bass. And that's like I said, layering can just be so good for that because you can have this thing completely out there. Like you would never just do that if you were trying to make a bass, but then when you layer that with a patch that's solid, there you go. So this one is this frequency FM and this clip sweep. We've got, you can see, uh, just a bunch of modulation. We get this envelope on the positions and on the filter frequency, plus an LFO on each of those and on the filter frequency as well. And then we just have a little bit of a high pass on that and then some echo, which also helps like kind of add texture too because it's spreading it out. Then on that whole thing all at once, we've got a bit of amp. You see it's being blended so you're still getting like the nice like dry signal and the fatness, but obviously this just adds a nice texture on top of that. So those are the synths. You can see it's really simple. Then we move down to the drums. And I synthesized all of these drums using operator. So starting with the kick, you can hear it's just this nice punchy synth kick. It's not quite like your usual synth kick. Like usually when people try to make kicks with a synth, I think it doesn't quite hit hard enough. This is still like a very solid, like fat kick, you know? And that's what you have to keep in mind. Like if you're going to use a synth to make a kick, you have to actually make it fat. And the way you do that is essentially just by studying references. Like when I was making this, I brought in some kick samples, like of live kicks, of different synthetic kicks as well different things that are maybe a combination of both and i just really like dialed in like the pitch envelope the volume envelope the volume envelope of these fm oscillators and essentially what it comes down to is just like having this short volume envelope on the first one a little bit of fm from each of these with these really short envelopes so it's just adding like we go from this this to this. You can hear it's just adding that transient punch on the kick. Again, the pitch envelope is really simple, just dropping down and just really getting that amount at the right. You can see too much and then it kind of messes it up. And also pitching it, if you notice, this is in key with the bass. <laughs> And when you do that, you're actually able to get the kick a little bit louder. And of course, if you're synthesizing it, it's very easy to keep it in tune. But yeah, other than that, no processing. You don't need a whole bunch of drum bus. You don't need a whole bunch of compression or even layering, really, to get this kick. You just need to use your ears and use the synth to actually create a kick. Like, you don't just want, like, a little, like, you know, like a tiny little hit. You want this big, fat, powerful kick like that. Then we have the hi-hats. So what's happening is it's this one. And then I made this one. Just on all the upbeats. And that kind of helps the groove. Because this on its own. Obviously that is the groove. But when you add this extra like a little bit more punchy bright one. On top of all the upbeats like I said. Like if I play these mini, the mini together you can see. It's like a subtle thing that can make the whole beat just be a lot more together and just more... Just 
having a lot more grooves. So this one is made with white noise. What's happening is it's this little t -t 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 -t. but you can see we're modulating the length of the notes. So you kind of get like a slightly different hi-hat every time. This is just some white noise in operator. I've got this envelope where it's kind of like dropping down, but you can still hear it if you hold the notes out. A little bit of drum bus, high pass filter, a little bit of a high end boost, and that's it. It's a very simple sound to make a hi hat with operator. And then for this one, it's pretty similar. It's white noise with an even shorter envelope, and then a high pass filter with a little bit of an envelope. That can help you get that more like metallic kind of punch out of the hi hat. You know, like an 808 or something like that. And then we just have a high pass filter. And then we have the snare. So the snare is probably the most complicated. And the way I did this is, again, just referencing like different snares. You know, I found a few different snares that sounded really good. And what you do is you can actually see it here. I use the EQ3 and basically just go through it and like, you know, listen to this, like just the low end. And then listen to just the low end in the snare and see if you got them. And you can really just easily go through the frequency bands like that. You know, use the synthesis to kind of like match what you're hearing. And then you end up with this pretty good snare. And with this one, it's really about using layers. Like if you listen, for example, so there's kind of like two parts to a snare. There's a like high end noisy kind of thing. And then there's like a doom, like a punch or something like that, right? And so what we're doing here is we're just using a few different layers to mimic the behavior of that. So, for example, with the high end, like the noise, I noticed, of course, there's a ch on every snare, right? But check out if we just have that. Right? And then see if I add in this little layer 12 here. So here's without it with it it's like this little tiny that shoots up at the end there but again it's those little tiny things that are happening kind of physically with an actual snare drum that basically you're just trying to recreate those with synthesis same thing with the punch i've got two layers for that i've got like a low end which is just that right And then this guy as well, which obviously, like, when you hear those on their own, you're probably like, you know, but then it makes up this, like, this, this is almost like when you turn the snares off on an actual snare drum, right? And then you put a little bit of noise on top, put that last little on the end, and there you go. So you see, it's just using the knowledge of synthesis to put together different layers. Like, for this low end layer, it's a sine wave with this kind of an envelope very similar to the kick. And a little bit of FM from the second oscillator. A pinch envelope like that with a little attack so it kind of like doesn't just drop down immediately. You know, some drum bus, a little high pass filter. And we're also taking just the lows on that. With the mid layer, you know, it's a very similar patch, just tweaked a little bit to kind of nail down that sound better. And that's the other thing with these two, is like when you make this one, you can definitely take this and use it to kind of make that next patch too. It's not just every layer from scratch, but it's just like kind of layering them up to make up all the parts of the snare. For the noise, so this one's just like this little... Even this, like the little bit of attack on the noise, like, because I noticed when I was listening to certain snares, it's not just all at once, everything. It's like you get the body of the snare, and then that, like, sizzle layer kind of, like, fades up very quickly. So, again, it's just as simple as using the envelope on the synth to recreate what's happening that you're hearing with your ears. Got a high pass on that, another little high pass at the end. This one is tiny. But see, it's, it's set up with the envelope, so it just shoots off of that last one. And there we go. And then on the group, there's also a bit of processing, which helps, but without it, it's still like... 
Right, so obviously you you can hear it's pretty synthy without this processing. And this is what can really help take it to like an actual drum like that, right? It's just we got this overdrive here, which is pretty heavy, but we're blending it. Which obviously does a lot of that, like taking it from a synth into like an actual snare. And then we have this drum bus here, so without that. That's the one that maybe you could forego if you wanted. But yeah, it just helped kind of give this a bit more texture as well to fit into. Because with this style of music, you don't want super pristine, perfect all the time, right? And then we just have a high pass filter because if you don't do that, this thing will definitely clash with the kick. Like, if you're going to have it hitting at the same time, you got to high pass that so that they're not going to clash. <laughs> On the group of those, you can see it's just a little bit of drum bus being blended, like only 12%. And there we are. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, the synthesized drums, everything is available at the top of the description on my website. This is the best thing you can do right now to make the best music of your life today. Thank you so much for the support, guys. But really, it's about supporting you guys, giving you an accessible, really, really high-quality template that can really help you, you know, get unstuck or just give you some new inspiration. Wherever you're at, you need this. Go grab it at the top of the description. Thanks for the support, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.